Last year, I had one of these moments of ultimate frustration. I received an email from a colleague asking me to have a quick look at that earthquake catalog. There was an attachment, hypocenters.txt, <laughs> a quick look. So if this were waveform files, no problem. I could just start Snuffler, get an overview, filter, zoom around a little bit. But for earthquake catalog information, why is there nothing like Snuffler for that? So I started writing a plotting script. The next throwaway plotting script. I hate writing plotting scripts. I've written thousands of them and I don't want to do that anymore. So that's why I started to write the sparrow, just like that quick little bird. It's not perfect yet, but it might already be useful to visualize and animate geophysical data. I'm Sebastian from Team Paroco, and I would like to show you how to start using the Sparrow. It is open source, and you are invited to contribute with code, feedback, money. Well, let's get started. The Sparrow is not officially released yet, so if you want to try it yourself, you will have to install its current development branch. Most of the installation is just like it is explained in the Pyroco manual. So I would just clone the Git repository of Pyroco. CD into the newly created directory. And then see what is the current uh, development branch of Sparrow. Okay, it might be the Sparrow 7 branch at the moment. So git check out Sparrow 7. And finally, we can just continue the usual install. So I would install the prerequisites. Well, I already have them, but to show you. Okay, prerequisites are there. Now just uh, continue the Pyroco installation. Additionally, for the Sparrow, we need VTK. So I would use pip in this case to install VTK. Oh, I already have it. <laughs> so uh, now we're ready to fly. Initially, we see a simple globe with coastlines from GSHHG. Navigation should be straightforward, but let me explain the concept behind. We have a point of interest whose coordinates are shown in the navigation panel here. By default, it is at the Earth's surface. Distance to this point is controlled with the mouse wheel. It also knows city names from the GeoNames database. So let's go to some nice place. Ah, Madagascar. Checking local focus switches to a different navigation mode where the location coordinates are fixed, 
but now the view direction can be modified. You can also use the control key to toggle between the two navigation modes. Hitting R brings you back to a north up map view. The view is composed of different elements. So in this case, it's three elements. The icosphere, this is the background sphere here. A grid of latitudes and longitudes. And the coastlines. Each of these elements may have some parameters controlling its appearance. So let's zoom into Madagascar here a little bit. You see the coastlines are quite rough, so we can switch here to a higher resolution. More elements can be added from the Add menu. So for example, let's add some topography. We can zoom in. So for close view, it will use SRTM topography. If we zoom out, it switches to eTopo, which is a global dataset of topography. To get the most out of the topography, we can play with the lighting. So for example, a morning view, an evening view, or as if we had a lamp on a desktop. And topography on Earth is quite flat, so we might want to exaggerate it a little bit. Mm, awesome. Let's remove the topography for a moment and look at some earthquakes. For that we have the catalog element here. So let's look at some centroid locations from events which accompanied the birth of a new seamount to the east of Mayotte Island. Looks quite scattered, not very interesting, but let's see if there is something more in this data set. Let's customize the appearance a little bit. Size according to magnitude, color according to time, and let's render them as spheres. A little bit smaller. And how does this look like? Well, this already tells us a pretty clear story of what happened there. Another useful feature are snapshots. They can be accessed here from the panels menu. And now we can just create a new snapshot from the current view. We can make a modify the view, make a new snapshot. And now when double clicking this transition here, we can interpolate between these two views. So the time is interesting in this sequence. So maybe let's filter the earthquakes by time. So for the first snapshots, double click will bring you to this snapshot, double click to this, to the other. Um, so we will now set a maximum time on this first snapshot. They were all after this date. And replace the snapshot. So now they are gone. And on the second snapshot, we set another maximum time, let's say 2018-08-01. And replace this second snapshot. So now it will also interpolate the maximum time of the filtering of the events. 
So we should now see how this sequence of earthquakes occurred. With the sequence of such snapshots, it's very easy to create an animation of your dataset. At the end, you can just export the movie to MP4 with the movie button down here. I hope you enjoyed this little preview of Sparrow and of course many things can still be improved but we think that this will be a great little tool for everyday seismological practice. And remember, Pyroco is open source so you are welcome to join us. <laughs>